y is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2. y is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2. That is y. 3x squared, x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2. Find the stationary points of y. Stationary points occur when dy by dx is equal to 0. That's where stationary points occur. So find dy by dx first. And dy by dx is going to be 3x squared minus 6x, All right, that's dy by dx. And they said for the stationary point, you know that dy by dx is zero. So solving 3x squared minus 6x equals zero, we're going to get, if we divide through by three, we're actually solving x squared minus 2x equals zero. And so the stationary values of x are going to be x equals 0 or x equal 2. But they said points. They want the stationary points. So we need to plug in 0 up here to get the corresponding y value. When x is 0, y is 2, comma. When x is 2, we're going to get 2 cubed minus 3 times 2 squared plus 2 which is negative two. So y is gonna be negative two, all right? So now we get our two stationary points. So let's write it down right here. So the stationary, stationary points are zero, two, and two, negative two. Those are the stationary points. Now it says, find the second derivative of y and hence determine their nature. Now, second derivative is used to determine the nature of each stationary point. So let's go ahead and do that. So the second derivative is d2y by dx squared, that is second derivative, d2y by dx squared. So we'll find d2y by dx squared. d2y by dx squared is gonna be, we're gonna differentiate this dy by dx. So d2y by dx squared is gonna be six x minus six. That's d2y by dx squared. Now, all, we're gonna plug in the two points now to determine which one is minimum and which one is maximum. So at zero two, what we're gonna notice is that d2y by dx squared is going to be, when we plug in zero, when we plug in x at zero, we're gonna get six times zero minus six. So we're gonna get minus six. Now minus six is negative which is less than zero. And so this is a maximum point. So zero two is a maximum point. This is maximum point. All right, so I'm just gonna write max for now. Then we need to find out at two negative two. At two negative two, let's see what is happening. At two negative two, we're gonna get d2y by dx squared. And that's gonna be equal to six times two, which is 12. 12 minus six is positive six, which is greater than zero. And that's a minimum point. Min, all right? So what can we conclude? We can conclude that zero two is a zero two is a maximum stationary point. All 
and two negative two is a minimum stationary point. Nice and easy. That's what we can conclude. Now we have one more part of this question to do. It says differentiate y equal 5x plus 3 all cubed sine x and it says to simplify your answer. So of course we're going to use product rule to do this. So y is equal to 5x plus 3 y is equal to 5x plus 3 cube multiplied by sine x. And we're required now to differentiate this as far as we can go. So dy by dx is going to be equal to, dy by dx is equal to, keep the first. So we'll keep the first, we'll get 5x plus 3 all cube times the differential of the second. When we differentiate sine x, we get cos x plus keep the second, which is sine x times the derivative of the first. Now when we differentiate the first one, we're gonna bring down the power three. We're gonna subtract one from the power. So it's three times five x plus three all square. And then we multiply it by the derivative inside the bracket, which is five. Nice and easy. So this works out to be five X plus three all cubed. Five X plus three all cubed multiplied by the cos of X plus Let's simplify over this side now. Three times five is 15. And so we'll get 15 times five X plus three, all square. Times the sine of X. That's dy by dx. Nice and easy. Now it says simplify it as far as we can go. So if we wanna go further, I realize that five X plus three all square is in common with both of these terms. And so I can factor out a five X plus three all square. If I factor out a five X plus three all square, what I get left back with is right here. So it becomes five X plus three times cos X. 5x plus 3 cos x, and it's then going to be multiplied, 5x plus 3 multiplied by cos x, plus, I'm just left back with plus 15 sine x here. So this is as far as I can go in terms of simplifying it. All right, that's for me. This is as far as I can go. That's it, that's dy by dx. Nice and easy, soft. All right, now we go on to integration now, integration. Question six, it says find the integral of five x squared plus four. That's a very easy question or non-challenging question. They want us to integrate 5x squared plus 4. So as we know, the general rule of integration is we add 1 to the power and then we divide by the power. So we have 5x squared plus 4 dx. We're just going to add 1 to the power. Adding one to the power x squared, so we get five x cubed. Then we divide by the power, the new power three plus, 
add one to the power, so it becomes four times x to the one divided by one. But anytime you integrate like that, you put plus a constant of integration c. That takes care of part a. Nice. Now the next part of the question says, evaluate the integral from zero to pi by two of three sine x minus five cos x. Let's go ahead and do that. Compute the integral from zero to pi by two. Zero to pi by two of three sine x. Three sine x minus five cos x. dx. So now to do this integration is fairly simple. All right, so to carry out this integral now is now three sine x. Now when you integrate sine, you get minus cos. So this is gonna work out to be minus three sine x, minus three sine x, then when you integrate cos, you just get sine, so it just becomes minus. When you integrate sine, you get minus cos. It should be minus cos right here. Minus three cos x. And then when you integrate cos, you get sine. This becomes minus five sine x. And we're integrating, of course, from zero to pi by two. We're integrating from zero to pi by two. All right, so since we're integrating from zero to pi by two, this is gonna work out to be, we're gonna substitute x as pi by two first. So it's gonna be minus, when you plug in pi by two for x, it's gonna be minus three cos pi by two. Well, yeah, let's write them out, so minus three cos pi by two minus five sine pi by two. Minus when we put in zero. Minus when we put in zero, when we put in zero. Well, the cos of zero is one, so that works out to be minus three minus zero. So let's work this out. Now the cos of pi by two, the cos of pi by two is the cos of pi by two, this is zero. So it works out to be, sine of pi by two is one. So it works out to be minus five, minus, minus three, minus five, minus, minus three is minus five plus three. And minus five plus three is negative two. So that's the, that's the integral of that, negative two. Nice and easy, soft. Now let's look at the next part of the question. It says a curve passes through the points 0, 8 and 4, 0. And it says find the area of the finite region bounded by the curve in the first quadrant. So guys, I always like to have a little sketch of what I'm doing, all right? They tell me I have a point zero 08. So this would be the point P. And you have the point Q, which is zero 04. This is the point Q. So this is the region. Let's just say it's a curve, all right? This is from P to Q. And they want the area of the finite region, mean they want inside here. This is what they want. All right, so first thing is we need to find this curve, whatever this curve is. All right, so remember P is the point zero eight and Q is the point four zero. So we need to find out the equation of this curve first. In order to find the equation of the curve, we need to integrate dy by dx. So what we're gonna say then is the equation of the curve is y is equal to 
the integral of 2 minus 2x the integral of 2 minus 2x that's why my integral of 2 minus 2x we'll do this integration what we're going to get is this becomes 2x minus integrate 2x that becomes x squared over 2 plus some constant c. So this is y. y is equal to 2x minus x squared over 2 plus some constant c. But we need to find this constant c. How are we going to find this constant c? Well, we can use we can use this point 0, 8. When y equal 8, so when y is equal to 8, x is 0. And so what are we getting? We're getting that 0 minus 0, 0 minus 0 plus c. So this gives us the equation of the curve. And so finally, we can conclude that y is equal to, I'm going to write it as minus x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 8. That is y. y is minus x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 8. All right. And then it says find the area of the finite region bounded by the curve in the first quadrant. So to find the area, the area is going to be equal to the integral of the curve from x being 0 to x being 4. So we're integrating from x being 0 to x being 4. And what are we integrating? We're integrating minus x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 8. dx that's equal to now we integrate now it becomes minus x cube over no add one to the power divide by the power we're dividing by three and three times two is six plus Add one to the power becomes two x squared over two. And add one to the power becomes plus eight x. And so now we're integrating, of course, from zero to four. So let's work this out now. All we need to do is plug in four because we don't need to plug in zero because zero times any of these numbers is zero. So we'll plug in four minus four cube. That's minus 64 over six. And then we have plus X square, which is four square, which is 16 plus eight times four, which is 32. So let's see what this area works out to be. At 16 plus 32 minus 64 over 6. And I'm getting 112 over 3. 112 over 3 units squared. That's the area. Nice and easy. And that's question six, soft. All right, now let's look at question seven. Question seven says, let's go.